thoughts and prayer going out to his his family. And meanwhile, families are still waiting for information about the, the remaining victims. We know three people did survive uh, that shooting. Yeah, very, very hard information to hear. Again, uh, nine people were killed, but there are three survivors. In a press conference earlier, uh, the police chief was telling us in Charleston that they are going to be speaking to some of those witnesses to learn more information. But their focus, as it has been since last night into this morning, is first finding that suspect. Uh, Pinckney was leading the Bible study at the time when the suspect walked in there uh, and just horrible information to learn that he sat in there for about an hour as they were doing Bible study before uh, shooting and killing all of the people there as well. So a, a story that we're just continuing to follow. But again, that search is now now made its way to the Midlands. We've been hearing from a lot of religious leaders mm -hmm. all over the country, including Elder Joseph Darby. Take a listen. He epitomized Christian ministry, uh, which means to carry the good news and to touch people's lives and advocate them in ways that express the issues that flow from the gospel. All right, so you just heard from one of the elders in the AME Church. Uh, a lot going on on WLTX.com. Of course, uh, we are breaking into uh, some of your regular programming right now for a big safety issue. We have two live streams going on on WLTX right now. Uh, one is from the U.S. Attorney General's press conference. You can see it there on our homepage. Uh, and also that conference is going to be starting any moment now. So we're going to try to break into that for you to give you the latest information. Also another one uh, from the FBI and Justice Department, uh, again, discussing what is going on there. Right. So we are hearing from, uh, you know, a number of agencies and, and organizations, authorities really speaking out. And we also do, of course, we have team coverage this morning. Uh, News 19 Savannah Levins has been in Charleston all morning morning long. We want to get to her right now for the latest information as the manhunt now really entering its 14th hour. Wow. Yeah, right behind me is kind of the press area that we have set up. This is where the police come when they give the uh, media updates. It's almost like a warehouse type area here in Charleston where we're all camped out. But just a few hours ago, the last briefing we got from the police, they made a call to the community to come together to share these pictures to get this out. And obviously it's worked. I mean, people coming together. We have this man's name now, a 21 year old uh, Dylan Storm Roof. Uh, we have his picture. We know where he's from. We're getting so many details now and like you mentioned earlier so many different uh, organizations and groups coming together to really help assist in this manhunt they mentioned earlier they're bringing in FBI agents from Washington DC and his plea earlier we got some really really chilling details in that last press conference I mean they were saying that the sus uh, the, yeah the suspect um, was actually in the church with this Bible study group sitting down with them for nearly an hour before shooting and killing them. I mean, that is just absolutely chilling details. Um, and again, he made the plea and said, yes, our officers are tired, but they're not giving up. They're taking this personally. When someone comes into our city and hurts our people, we take it personally and we're not going to rest until we find him. They seem very confident that they will. And they also asked that the public, uh, in his words, actually wrap their arms around that church and around this community. Obviously, we know lots of families and friends hurting uh, today in Charleston. So they're asking that everyone just kind of send their prayers um, and their love to those people as this manhunt continues. Lionel, Ashley. All right, Savannah, thank you so much. And again, she has been updating us. Uh, follow her on Twitter at Levin's Reports for those updates. Also, our Ron Aiken has been mm -hmm. following the story. Some breaking information right now. He was actually chased out of a neighborhood. 14 vehicles marked and unmarked uh, in a part of Lower Richland County. The the question remains of whose house this is, but again, this is in Lower Richland County. 14 vehicles marked, unmarked, uh, and it does appear to be a, a house, a family house, again, in Lower Richland County. We are getting these updates by the minute, and we are doing everything we can to keep you posted. But again, the big story right now is that the search for Dylan uh, Roof has now moved into the Midlands for quite some time. We did hear from the police chief of Charleston saying that this man was likely to still be in the Charleston area. Now learning that may not be the case because Roof, we've learned, is from this area, according to Columbia Mayor Steve Benjamin. Yeah, and again, this is a safety concern, and this is part of the reason why they were giving us updates earlier, and there was supposed to be a press conference at 7, and they called it an hour earlier simply because they wanted to make sure that this man's photo, that all of the information was getting to the community before we even learned that the search was moving here to Richland County. So again, uh, just showing you that law enforcement across the country working together, the FBI, 
FBI sending people uh, from D.C. to the area mm -hmm. to help uh, in this search effort as well. We are working too to find out, as you can see, this is a mugshot here. We're looking to, for information about his uh, his criminal background, and we do know that he was arrested uh, earlier this year. We're told it, it, it involves drug charges, but we are still waiting to get more information about the background of Dylan Roof. But again, we have confirmed he is in fact 21 years old from our area and, and a very uh, large search underway, possibly right now in Lower Richland County. Yeah, and again, just a, a very tragic and tough morning. Uh, three of the victims were males, six females, and there were three survivors uh, from this just massacre. And a lot of people asking the question why, uh, trying to figure out more information, but also seeing a lot of unity uh, in just a trying time. So throughout the night, I mean, two, three o'clock in the morning, people were gathering uh, every hour and having prayer circles, really consoling one another. The big question a lot of people still asking is why and trying to really wrap their heads around why this happened and why it happened there. And, you know, these are a lot of questions on a lot of people's minds, of course, but uh, it is 1108 at this point. And at noon, we do know prayer services will be starting across the state in Columbia, uh, in, in Charleston as well, in Orangeburg at AME churches. Yeah, and again, they are doing this at noon uh, across the state. They are encouraging everyone to, to take that moment to remember the lives that were lost in just such a tragic accident. Also, you know, Pinckney was a, a senator. The state Senate has canceled that session for today uh, and a symbolic showing a black cloth over his seat in the state house. This is lawmakers are, are taking time to remember him. Uh, that session possibly may not be canceled, but they are trying to make sure that they are remembering his honor as well. A number of statements coming in, uh, a big one coming in from the NAACP's president and CEO, Cornell Brooks, uh, releasing some pretty strong words says, quote, the NAACP was founded to fight against racial hatred, and we are outraged that 106 years later, we're faced today with another mass hate crime. Our heartfelt prayers and soul deep condolences go out to the families and community of the victims at Charleston's historical Emmanuel AME Church. The senselessly slain parishioners were in a church for that Wednesday night Bible study. As you know, no greater coward, he says, than a criminal who enters a house of God and slaughters innocent people engaged in the study of scripture. Now we have also uh, learned that President Obama is expected to speak at 1210 uh, on, on what happened in Charleston, what we know so far, and really just weighing in as the nation really mourning. Uh, and we are just learning that okay, the we, suspect, 21-year-old Dylan Roof, has been caught in North Carolina. Yeah, this, this information just coming in Shelby, North Carolina, we have just learned. So again, you can see just the wide range of areas uh, across a number of states that they have been on the lookout for this man. Again, 21-year-old Dylan Stormroof, we have just learned, has been arrested uh, in Shelby, North Carolina, wanted for shooting and killing nine people inside of a church during Bible study. Again, this, this information coming in by the second, our producers uh, feeding that information mm -hmm. to us as well. Uh, we have been looking for information all, all morning long and, and hopefully a sense of relief for, for some of the those affected, the, the victims, family members and friends in the community there in Charleston, all calling for justice all morning long, hoping for this guy to be caught. That has been the goal of law enforcement FBI, SLED, local agencies there in Charleston, uh, really and agencies from across the East Coast coming together to try to track this guy down. Again, that has now happened. We have just learned that he has been caught in Shelby, North Carolina. Yes, yeah, certainly working to find more details about exactly how they were able to catch that suspect, but that information just coming in. Uh, and, and church members and people in Charleston have been in a hotel overnight uh, mm -hmm. together trying to wait and find out more information from that autopsy report. Again, people gathering to pray. So a lot going on, a lot of information information again as people are learning what has happened in such just a tragic thing to happen in a place of worship uh, in Charleston and just a historic church with with so much history and such a legacy in our community as well. And I'm sure you know as soon as, soon as we can we'll be learning more about the victims and the lives that they lived. Uh, just the fact that they were in a Bible study talking about their faith worshiping uh, the Lord when someone opens fire. He had that gun with him we're told mm -hmm. and waited an hour before shooting and killing those nine people, uh, fathers, grandmothers, moms, according to the police chief. Uh, and, and they've been there too as well. The police chief and the mayor uh, hugging, weeping family members, just really trying to grasp what 
happened. And as you can imagine, a trying time, people working a number of hours to make sure that the community was safe. But the something that was pretty interesting to me a little bit earlier, uh, when the police chief of Charleston was speaking, he said that they're all taking this very personal. You know, for mm -hmm. someone to walk into your community and threaten your safety in a place that is supposed to be sacred, no matter what your religion is, uh, is something that they were taking very personal. Uh, and they have all been, again, just coming together and trying to show that unity after such a thing. When you think of the legacy that Pinckney has left, not only in the state house, but in the religious community and the Charleston area, mm -hmm. uh, and for something like this to happen, for people to be waking up to this news as well. But again, uh, if you are just joining us, that man, 21 year old Dylan Stormroof, has been arrested in Shelby, North Carolina, still working to find out how they were able to, to, to catch him. But that search went across state lines. Mm -hmm. They were looking here in Columbia uh, with, sh with a lot of information and ties that we knew he had to the area just minutes ago. Ties to Lexington, ties to Richland County, ties to Columbia. Uh, so the search really just uh, ongoing until now. So we are talking about a man that was on the run for 12, 13, 14 hours. Uh, we're still waiting to get exact confirmation of what time he was caught. But uh, earlier we did hear from the Charleston police chief elaborating on no doubt that this is a hate crime. Very early on, he called this a hate crime. So uh, for so long, we've been wanting to really focus on getting this guy caught. And now a lot of people are going to be raising questions about prosecution. And the police chief did say that uh, by using it as a hate crime, they can work closer with the attorney's office uh, to get this guy more serious charges. Yeah, they were able to get a lot more assistance from government agencies. Mm -hmm. And again, so many people were deployed immediately, making their way even as far as D.C. Uh, to bring the support that authorities needed to search for this man uh, and to continue to find him. So fortunately, the good news to report that he has been arrested at this time. Uh, no word on the condition of the three people who did survive this. No information uh, just yet has been released about the victims, who they are just yet. We are going to have to wait and get that information from the coroner, we're told. Again, we want to reiterate uh, that you can go to our website to stay up to date with us, WLTX.com. Follow us on Twitter. We do have reporters in Charleston right now trying to dig up more information as we expect to learn more about the victims and the lives lost at this church at the oldest AME church in the South, uh, Emmanuel AME Church uh, in Charleston. Again, all of this really sparking last night, unfolding just after nine. You can see the video here, uh, just how horrific as it paints the picture of uh, crews trying to take the victims uh, on a stretcher there to the hospital. Now, we did know one of the victims was transported to the hospital where uh, he was late. They were later pronounced dead. So nine victims total in this mass church shooting. Yeah, and a lot of people weighing in on this. Senator Lindsey Graham uh, released a statement earlier saying, quote, there are bad people in this world who are motivated by hate. Every decent person has been victimized by the hateful, caius disregard for human life shown by the individual who perpetrated these horrible acts. Our sense of security and well-being has been robbed and shaken, really reiterating how a lot of people feel after hearing that news uh, in a place that you would consider to be one of the safest places for you to be, to be at Bible study, to be in a place of worship uh, and to have somebody walk in there and shoot and kill not only the pastor, but people who were there worshiping with that pastor as well. So again, more information just coming in. A reminder, please follow us on WLTX uh, on Twitter, Facebook, and WLTX.com, and we're using the hashtag Pray for Charleston. Absolutely, and speaking of prayer, we're about 45 minutes out from a number of services that are planned for noon today, uh, including uh, Morris Brown in Charleston, also Bethel AME in Columbia, and Williams Chapel in Orangeburg, just to name a few. Uh, again, expecting the communities to come together. And with the news of, of him being caught, the gunman being caught in Shelby, North Carolina, mm -hmm. hopefully a little bit of a sense of relief for law enforcement along with uh, the victim victims, family members. Most definitely. Uh, we're going to get to one more statement because of his Pinckney's legacy mm -hmm. that he did have uh, in politics in our state. The Speaker of the House, Jay Lucas, also releasing a statement saying, as a loving father, husband, and dedicated public servant, Clementa Pinckney was a man of honor and sought to make a difference in the lives of others, having served with him for a short time in the South Carolina House. And continuing our friendship after his move to the Senate, Clementa held firm to his convictions and his integrity was a direct reflection of the love of he shared for Christ. He went on to say Senator Pinckney's calming presence will be missed in Columbia and across South Carolina. 
but that he is certain his legacy will live on. And those words reiterated by Mayor Benjamin, who knew mm -hmm. him for more than 25, 25 years. years. And, and we've heard from the governor. We've heard from Lieutenant um, Henry McMaster. And then we know, again, President Obama will be speaking in a little less than an hour, a little afternoon. So we well, that has actually just moved up again. Things are changing now. We've just learned that it's going to be 1145 this morning that the president will be speaking and giving us an update. And I'm sure very strong words about how not only Charleston, not only you know, parts of our areas in the Carolinas, but how the country is bracing and dealing with such a tragedy. We've heard too so much about really staying together, the community coming together in, in such a tragic event and trying to make sense of it all. But we do want to take a, a listen to the Attorney General this morning. The Department of Justice is prepared and I am personally determined to continue working with our federal, state and local partners to bring about the vital progress that all Americans deserve. Now, I want to thank all of the law enforcement officials who were part of the team that made this sweeping takedown possible. Their tireless efforts enabled us to move quickly and aggressively, and their inspiring collaboration will be a model for us going forward. Now, at this time, I'd like to turn the podium over to Secretary Sylvia Burwell, who's been a dedicated leader and a truly indispensable partner in this important work, and who will provide additional details on today's announcement. Thank you so much. And now, Secretary Burwell. <coughs> Thank you. All right, so you just heard from the Attorney General, again, briefing us on how important it was for everyone to be working together to quickly uh, find a man who who could have been anywhere in the mm -hmm. country at that point. It had been hours, almost 12 hours, if not more, uh, that they were searching for him. President Obama, again, in just about 25 minutes, will also be giving an update. Using strong words, calling it a sweeping takedown, uh, really commending law enforcement for acting quickly, acting aggressively. So at this point, again, we do know that the suspect has been caught in Shelby, North Carolina. We are still waiting for updates on exactly how it happened, and we are, of course, going to keep you posted on those details. Most definitely. Again, a reminder, all of this information that we're covering is on WLTX.com. We're also tweeting it out by the minute. Uh, also, follow our crew and our team that is out there. We have Savannah Levins out there bringing us the latest uh, information as we're getting it by the minute, but just a very hard night and a very hard morning uh, for people across the country to wake up and hear the news of nine people being shot and killed inside of their church uh, during Bible study. But good news that they have finally found that suspect, a 21 year old with close ties here to the Midlands uh, and again arrested in Shelby, North Carolina. Family right here in the Midlands, uh, Columbia Mayor Stephen Benjamin telling us family uh, in Columbia even. So they had been stepping up security across the city of Columbia. So again, can't talk about enough uh, of a sense of relief that hopefully is mm -hmm. being felt now that uh, he is no longer a threat to society at this point. Yeah, now the community, of course, coming together. A number of churches across the state are going to be meeting at noon for a prayer service. Morris Brown in Charleston, but some here in the Midlands as well. Mount Pisgah in Sumter, also Bethel AME in Columbia. And uh, Williams Chapel in Orangeburg. Uh, again, we do have all hands on deck and we are keeping you up to date. So uh, this has been the story. We've been following this now for 14 hours. Mm -hmm. And and finally, uh, a, a little bit of good news with him being off uh, the streets in caught no longer on the run 21 year old uh, Dylan Roof. Yeah, and again, uh, a lot of people have been giving strong words. Again, the president is speaking at 1145. So we're going to hear uh, more about the national response to this right now. We just heard a little bit from the attorney general and there's going to be another press conference in Charleston. We're going to stay on the air. We're going to bring it to you if we need to break in mm -hmm. uh, with the latest information uh, and to hear from the police chief there about where they are and possibly how they were able to catch this man because uh, as of this morning it was kind of they thought he was in the Charleston area then it mm -hmm. was believed that he was possibly here in Columbia and he did end up getting arrested in Shelby North Carolina a lot of people calling this uh, just a senseless act of violence immediately when we learned of that shooting not long after they were already calling it a hate crime and investigating it as such exactly and that kind of puts it into perspective of the uh, the immediacy and hopefully the with the attention to detail that will come into play here when it comes to prosecuting 
shooting uh, the suspected shooter, 21-year-old Dylan Roof. Now, uh, another thing to think about, too, is at this point, families still waiting to hear from the coroner. We are still waiting to learn more about so many of the victims. Again, we have confirmed Senator Pinckney is among the dead, but with nine people killed total, uh, we have a lot to learn about the lives and the legacies of, of those uh, who did not survive. Uh, again, three did survive, but uh, three males and six females were killed uh, while they were in a Bible study, while Senator Pinckney was leading that Bible study just last night at nine o'clock. Just yesterday, seven, Senator Kevin Johnson saw him mm -hmm. and was and was laughing with him and, and meeting with him. And then only a matter of hours later and his life is gone, a wife, leaving behind a wife and two children. And we had Senator Johnson on the show this morning uh, with some re really touching words, but saying that this was something that no one could even believe, that even after hearing that news that he called his cell phone uh, because he was in disbelief that something like this could happen to someone uh, like, like Pinckney, every person that we have talked to has really talked about his kind spirit and mm -hmm. the, the, how much he cared about the community, the legacy that he left uh, with everything uh, that he did. So again, uh, to hear that someone had the audacity to walk into a church uh, as they were conducting Bible study and, and to sit for an hour before then shooting and killing those people, a very hard news to report this morning. Now, we did also speak uh, with Elder Darby, who uh, was uh, pr very close with Senator Pinckney. Here's what he had to say earlier this morning. Messages, probably two or threefold. One part of that message is that we solicit prayers for our Reverend Pinckney's family, for that church family, for the families, all of those who lost their lives in a senseless and cruel way. The other part of that message is that there's a need to create the kind of positive dialogue that will lessen the acceptability of racial bigotry. And again, you know, just, just hard words to hear from people who are kind of learning more information about this as we are other church leaders. All right, we're gonna jump right into network coverage right now with more information. This is a CBS News special report. I'm Anthony Mason in New York. 21 year old uh, Dylan Roof, we just heard in that CBS special report that uh, obvious signs of him celebrating the Confederacy. Yeah, and hatred not only here in the States, but in, in a country that is now Zimbabwe. Uh, and again, we were talking about the unique things on his sweatshirt and the unique things on his license plate. So we did just hear a little bit more about that uh, and basically learning that they were possibly signs of hate as well. Uh, more information we are learning just by the second about more of who this who this guy was and what would possess someone to do something that is just so hard. Again, a 21 year old Dylan Stormroof uh, recently arrested in the last 30 minutes or so uh, in Shelby, North Carolina. Uh, people across the country were on the lookout uh, for him who was considered armed and dangerous after just walking into a church and shooting and killing nine people in a place of worship during Wednesday night Bible study. Sitting there with them, we're told, for an hour before opening fire, uh, sparing the lives of, of three people, three uh, survivors who have been talking to police, describing what they saw, what they witnessed, but claiming the life of of nine people, including Senator Pinckney. It's, it's a story that we've been following now for 14 hours, the manhunt uh, going on nearly that long. And, and thankfully, again, good news that he has been caught in Shelby, North Carolina, because we know uh, just a little bit ago that the search had extended into the Midlands, into Richland County and Lexington County because he has roots here and family across the Midlands. Yeah, he did attend White Knoll High School. Uh, a lot of family and parts of lower Richland County, but again, Mayor Benjamin did stress when we spoke to him a little bit earlier that he had so many ties that that raised a red flag, that that raised their intent to let them know that they should be searching the area and be on the lookout. But he again was arrested uh, in North Carolina. That church just is a historically black church that's been around since 1816, the oldest AME church in the country. So you can imagine religious leaders uh, and people trying to make sense of this and really consoling one another in, in just such a tragic time. It's really just hard to imagine what the community is really going through, what the, the family members of the victims have been going through. And we know uh, 50 uh, or so uh, AME church leaders were, have been in Charleston uh, and were there bright and early this morning to uh, console the, the family members and, and, and the community really mm -hmm. needing to, to come together through prayer. There were prayer circles uh, on the hour, oh, every hour, all morning long, and, and another vigil set to start in Charleston. 
Charleston in about half an hour. And we know uh, vigils as well uh, at Amy churches in Columbia. Orangeburg and across the state. Yeah, also Sumter, Greenville, really all across the state, and they really are, are are expanding their network and reaching out to other religious leaders, really consoling everyone. It would give you chills to really see those prayer circles happening at one, two, three o'clock in the morning uh, as people knew no information as they were still searching for this suspect, but a lot of people found it very important to come together. Uh, a little bit earlier, the mayor and the chief of police of Charleston uh, did have a press conference and they spoke about one the search and briefed us on that suspect. They had an earlier press conference than planned because they wanted to make sure they got his image out there, all of his information, but they also talked about how important it was for us to come together. They were there crying, hugging, consoling uh, residents in the area and saying that in a time like this, you really see all of the love and support of the people of Charleston and the country coming together. We're talking about the, the lives of mothers, grandmothers, fathers, all lost in this tragedy. Uh, the accused shooter, 21 year old Dylan uh, Roof, no longer on the run, finally caught in Shelby, North Carolina. We have confirmed that if you are just now waking up with us. Uh, in about 15 minutes, actually a little bit less than that, at 11.45, we are expected to get an update from President Obama. We also know that we are expecting to get an update in the next coming minutes or so from Charleston as well. But you're taking a look at video that we've been sharing uh, for several hours now, really trying to put it into perspective for you of how important this story is and, and how heavy hearts certainly are across the state. Yeah, just very, very sad. Again, Senator Pinckney among the nine people shot and killed inside of that church. We are standing by right now uh, to check in with that press conference from Charleston to learn more information. The NAACP, a number of lawmakers all uh, releasing statements, just one talking about how heinous of a crime this is, the audacity again for someone to do something so horrible in, in a place of worship, but also the importance of us to all come together. Uh, religious or non-religious, mm -hmm. you're hearing from people across the board talking about how important it is for us to be together. You would think you would feel safe in a church. A church is considered for most people a safe haven, mm -hmm. and that was just not the case, uh, obviously, last night. And from the beginning, we, we heard from uh, the local police chief, the Charleston police chief, calling this a hate crime, no doubt in his mm -hmm. mind from the beginning. And uh, with that special report from CBS, we did learn some confirmation about that, about the fact that uh, his license plate on that black four-door sedan that police had been looking for does have signs that celebrate the Confederacy, signs of hate. Also, uh, patches that he was wearing uh, on his sweater celebrating apartheid uh, in parts of Africa as well. So uh, just just more information that we're learning uh, from him. Again, they are about to speak in Charleston. You can see that podium is set up. We're going to be learning information any second now, so we're going to bring that to you live as soon as that does happen. Our Savannah Levins is there also reporting. You can follow her on Twitter at Levins Reports. Also follow WLTX on Facebook and Twitter, WLTX.com. We're posting the information as we get it by the minute. They have been, uh, you know, informing us to several updates with press conferences overnight into the morning. And when we talked with State, uh, Mayor Benjamin just a few minutes ago, he kind of talked about there's always issues of when to release information, mm -hmm. what exactly to release to the public. And he talked about the importance of really getting all the information out to track this guy down to get him behind bars. And that is the result that we are happy to report this morning that 21 year old uh, Dylan Roof has been arrested in North Carolina. Again, we know this man right here had been considered armed and dangerous for hours on the run after this just heinous, horrific crime uh, now caught a lot of people calling for justice and and hopes that that in fact he will face the most serious charges possible. Yeah, and a number of agencies again responding the FBI sled a uh, local agencies also pitching in. We, they even brought in people from DC to help with this search uh, in the early hours after that shooting. So again, uh, good news to report that that man has been apprehended, but just a horrible story to let you know about nine people again uh, dead in inside of their church. And so just hard information again, the president is going to be speaking in less than 10 minutes at 1145. So we're going to get you the latest uh, from Washington DC as well. And that press conference in Charleston expected to start any minute now, uh, but just a very, very hard morning and a hard night for people uh, across the country. Absolutely, just really trying to kind of put ourselves in their in their position, trying to understand how the victims uh, family members have to feel right now, how the community uh, really sings.
seeing them come together uh, in, in the wake of this. And we're also hearing from religious leaders, from church leaders. We did speak with Elder Joseph Darby. He uh, worked closely with Senator Pinckney um, religiously and, and did have some things to say about him as well. All right, we're going to bring you more information. We want to make sure that we get you that Charleston press conference. We're going to go to break for a few minutes. Don't go anywhere. All right, welcome back to News 19 this morning. We are cutting into your regular programming right now for breaking news that we have been following. Uh, the shooter wanted for killing nine people or accused of killing nine people inside of a church in Charleston has been arrested. 21 year old Dylan Storm Roof with close ties to the Midlands. You can see there's a press conference about to happen any moment now in Charleston, and we're going to bring you that information. I'm not sure if you can see uh, from the screen, but that is Governor Nikki Haley there uh, at that press conference as well. We did get a statement from her earlier this morning morning talking about how her family is of course praying for the victims and again she's in Charleston uh, right now as we are waiting for more information. News 19 Savannah 11's is there. We're going to get to her as soon as this press conference starts. We also know President Obama is expected to speak uh, at 1145 in just a few minutes as well and we did just hear from the Attorney General saying that it was a sweeping takedown mm -hmm. to get this guy caught and apprehended. Yeah, really talking about how quickly and aggressively all of the agencies were working and you heard that expressed from the police chief and the mayor earlier uh, before they even were able to find that suspect of how quickly they were working with other agencies that the FBI was sending people from DC uh, to help in that search sled as well. Uh, and again, he was uh, finally arrested uh, in Shelby, North Carolina within the last hour. So so a lot of developments have been coming in by the minute and we're expected to learn a little bit more when they do start that press conference any moment now. That's right. He was considered armed and dangerous for nearly 14 hours at least uh, since he was on the run after gunfire just erupted inside of that church, a historically African-American AME church, the oldest AME church in the South with roots dating back to 1816. They were studying the Bible, a Bible study, uh, and the accused shooter was in there studying with them for an hour before killing I Nine think that people. was the most the, the most shocking piece of information and the hardest thing for people to hear that 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 man was in there with them for an hour before doing just such a horrible thing. Again, Senator Pinckney was one of the people who has been confirmed dead. He's been a state lawmaker for years and a pastor of the Emanuel AME Church. Again, the oldest in the nation as well. So when you think of the legacy and the impact that they've had on the community and how, how many people look to them uh, as a safe haven and as a place of worship as well. Uh, we are trying to figure out more information and, and to learn more about the type of man who is accused of doing this and why someone would do something like this and also more about the victims. Uh, the coroner has not released those names yet. You can only imagine what's going through the victims' families' uh, minds right now for hours really just waiting for word, waiting to hear from the coroner. We know religious leaders um, have been in Charleston at a hotel comforting them, talking to them, really stressing the importance of the community. But we do know that... Um, uh, the press conference is about to start. Mm -hmm. That is the police chief, Greg Mullins. We have heard from him uh, overnight, all morning long, giving us updates, keeping us informed. All right, the mayor is there as well. We're going to let you hear right now.